Hi, it's Sean again from Chicory's Travels. Today we're going to talk a little bit about water heater maintenance. Um, a couple things I wanted to point out before we flush the water heater is the outside. Um, first of all, on the outside of ours, it lets us know it's an Atwood brand, which is important when you're going to do the maintenance. Um, and second, they have these vent screens on them, and we've added this external screen, which is much smaller. Um, and this is important in the maintenance process because it keeps bugs from getting into the water heater and wasps um, building nests in there or other insects building nests which will cause problems um, with your water heater lighting or with any of the ventilation. So um, two things we've already done before we were going to do this flush. Uh, the first thing was we shut off all the power to the water heater. Um, this is important because you don't want to get burned. Um, next we um, let the water cool. Um, I ran the hot water inside and until it was a uh, comfortable temperature and then the second thing we did was shut off the water source um, so we can actually drain the, the uh, water heater and um, see all the particles that are coming out. Um, the company Atwood recommends um, draining the water heater frequently if you're a full-time RVer. Um, it is designed for recreational use, so if you're actually using this as your home, you want to flush it more. Um, I'm going to try once a quarter, once every three months, and see if that um, keeps it functioning properly. So let's get started. So the first thing we want to do is open the water heater. Um, there is a pressure relief valve. And all you want to do is just lift that up and water is going to come out um, releasing the pressure um, from within the water heater. And you want it to be straight out like that, um, releasing the pressure from within the heater. So just let it drain. It's normal for water to come out of there. The next thing you want to do on the Atwoods, there is a plug underneath and you want to uh, take out that plug and let the water drain. And you're going to see, hopefully, um, some particles coming out on here, um, hopefully because that means they're coming out of the water heater. If you have a good filtration system, which we just installed, um, hopefully you won't, you won't see that many particles after you've been using it for a while. Um, but if you, if you don't have a good filtration system installed, there should be particles coming out. So we'll just take this off. It's a one inch plastic bolt. I think I'm going to... And it's not super tight, so it should be fairly easy to get out. And there you go. Drain. Okay. okay, so now our water has drained, um, but there's still a residual amount of water in the bottom of the water heater. So what they recommend is turning on your water, um, leaving your pressure valve open, turning on your water, and let it run for about 90 seconds, which will uh, agitate the stuff that's in the bottom of the tank and hopefully get um, some of the particles that are trapped down there out. So we'll do that. Okay, so we have the water running. We'll just let it run for, like I said, about a minute and a half. Um, we did have some good chunks come out initially, but um, we just want to make sure we get all that, all that junk out of there. Okay, so it's been about uh, two minutes and we're not seeing any particles coming out of here. Um, so we're gonna say that we have uh, adequately flushed the water filter. Uh, or the water heater. So I'm going to shut off the water now and then we'll reinstall the plug. Okay, so now we've done our flush and it's time to re reinstall our water plug. Um, I wrapped it in Teflon tape. If it's bent out of shape or uh, a lot of uh, stuff on it that will cause it to leak, you can uh, just replace this. Get it from an RV dealership or order one online. Um, so now we're just going to reinstall it.
and it doesn't have to be cranked down too tight. Um, you just don't want it to leak. While I'm doing this, um, as we're getting ready to fill it back up, you want it to build up pressure um, in the water heater. So you want to make sure that there's enough uh, fluid in there. Um, and just up that. Okay, that's tight enough. Um, so you put the plug back in, leave your uh, pressure valve open, and turn on and also leave open the closest faucet to your water heater. So for us, that is the bathroom tub. Um, so we'll leave this open. I have that open already. We'll turn on the water and we will wait for water to come out of here, letting us know that it is adequately filled. Okay, so we have been running it for a couple minutes and now we have water coming out of our pressure valve. So now we can just close the pressure valve just a simple flip down and then we will um, go shut off our valve inside or our faucet inside and turn back on the water heater and wait a little while um, and run the hot water to make sure it's working appropriately. Um, one other thing you can do um, is get uh, blow air through this vent here. This is what um, is the, uh, I think it's called the igniter vent. Um, sometimes that'll get clogged, particularly if you don't have a screen on the outside and bugs can get in there. Um, but you can blow that out with air and um, any dust or anything in there will, uh, will come out. Other than that, there's really not much other maintenance you need to do on the water heater. Like I said, the manu manufacturer recommends if you're living full time in your RV to do it frequently, um, flush this thing out. So then we'll just close it back up. And that's pretty much it. So I uh, hope you enjoyed this video. Again, I'm just learning all this stuff. We've had it a couple of years and I really haven't done much maintenance to our RV, so I'm trying to get it done now. So like I said in my previous video, please click subscribe and we'll learn all this stuff together. Thanks.